All right, so let's have a look at week six. Problem number one, which is problem 5.41, that states we have a refrigerant 134A, which enters an adiabatic compressor as saturated vapor at minus 24 Celsius and then leaves at 0.8 megapascals and 60 Celsius. The mass flow rate of the refrigerant is 1.2 kilograms per second and we are to determine the power input to the compressor and the volume flow rate of the refrigerant at the compressor inlet. All right, so let's have a look. What do we have here? We have a compressor. Let's just draw a little thing that's happening here. Compressor, and I'm going to put what we have inside so that we don't use wrong tables. Okay, and then we're it's leaving the system at 60 Celsius and 0.8 megapascals, and it's entering the system at minus 24 Celsius and as a saturated vapor. Okay, so note that both the states are defined from the beginning. Also, we have a mass flow rate, which was given, and it's 1.2 kilograms per second. Okay, as per usual, because the, of mass conservation, our mass flow rate at the inlet is going to be equal to the mass flow rate at the outlet. All right, so that is all the... 134 that goes into our system eventually leaves. It doesn't stay in the compressor. Okay? It's an adiabatic system, so there's no Q going in or out of our system. Okay, so therefore all the work done, all the, all this changes is due to the work of the compressor, which is one of the things we are to determine. Okay, so the first thing you do is if this one is defined, right? It's a saturated vapor, it's easy. Second thing we do is we'll have a look at the tables and you're going to see that the at 60 Celsius the saturated pressure is smaller. So because, let's put it this way, because our P2 is greater than our P set, it's a superheated fluid. Okay. P set in this case you're going to see on the table it's about 1000. So it's 1000. 682 kilopascals, okay? and we have 800. Okay, so the saturated one is greater than our 0.8, which is 800, so therefore this is superheated fluid. Okay, so the first thing we want is the power to the compressor, so let's start doing that. So, part eight, we want the power. We know that power is how the energy changes time, right? So, the rate of change, and if you notice. If we have the rate of energy per mass, let's put it as EM, and we multiply that by the rate of mass per time, okay, we get rid of the masses and we're left with the rate of energy change in respect to time. Okay, so if we can find the change in energy from here to here, which we know we can with these two states, and we multiply that by the mass flow rate, which is how mass changes of time, we can get the power, which is what we're being asked. Okay, so let's look at the inlet. Inlet or state one. Okay, we're gonna have. If you look at, we're gonna be at table A11 on page 916, and you're gonna grab that this guy has a H or the H1, which is H of saturated vapor which is equal to 235.9 kilojoules per kilograms. Okay. And on the outlet, let's change colors to outlet in red. So on the outlet, which is our state two, we're going to look on table E13 because it's a superheated one, which is on page, we'll look on page 920, and we're going to see that our enthalpy, so our H2, is 296.82 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so first part is quite simple, right? 
we have all the information that we need. All we need to do is combine the information. Okay, because we know that, let's do an arrow from here. We know that the rate of work time will be the change the delta H times the mass flow rate from what we just saw here. Okay, so that's going to be end state minus initial, so 296.82 minus 235.9 times 1.2, which renders which renders 72, 73.06 and the units, let's look at units, so the units for this guy here this is kilojoules per kilograms and this guy here is kilograms per second okay, so left with kilojoules per second, which is the same thing as a kilowatt. Okay, so this is 73 kilowatts. All right, so we killed the first part of the problem. All right, let me pause and change pages. Okay, and then part B asks us for the volume flow rate of the compressor at the inlet. So we still, let's draw it quickly here. Still have the compressor here, 134A, and it wants the how the volume is changing, so T D vol D T at inlet. Okay, we're to determine that. Now we as per usual we know the specific volume. Just by looking at the units, we know it's the volume divided by the mass, and therefore if we have mass times specific volume, we have the volume. I'll put vol well, not to be confused with velocity. And then if we take the derivative in respect to time on both sides, the specific volume does not change with time, right? It's a um, thermodynamic property, state property. It's dependent on the other properties, not on time. So it's regardless of how much time goes by, the specific volume for the or inlet conditions, which is minus 24 at saturated vapor, is always going to be the same. So this comes out of the derivative, and on this side we're going to have dt. Okay, so in other words, if we have the mass flow rate, and we do, which is 1.2, and we have a specific volume, which we can grab, we can find the, vo the volume flow rate, as easy as that. So, I can go ahead and grab my specific volume from the table, specific volume from the table, so it's going to be the saturated vapor specific volume at minus 24 Celsius. So from the same table that I grabbed the, uh, I'll put the table down below. I grabbed my specific volume, which is 0 0.17398 meters cubed per kilogram. Okay, this is table, again, A11, from page 960. Okay, so if we want to find this guy here, all we need to do is as simple as 1.2 kilograms per second times 0.17398 that's meters cubed per kilogram kilogram that's kilogram we're left with meters cubed per second which is precisely what we're after and that is 0 0.20877 or approximately 0. 209 meters cubed per second. Okay, as simple as that. 